and we're back. Sorry about that. All right, so our next step uh, for creating a portrait is we're going to draw a line directly down the center of the head. Okay, that's gonna be your dividing line for the center of your face. All right, so second line we're going to make is going to be a line directly across the very center of the head. So if we really wanna get down to the nitty gritty, we can measure this. All right, so my, four, my face is about seven inches long, so I'm gonna mark it here at about three and a half inches. I'm gonna come across right here. This is going to be our eye line, okay? From there, we are gonna come halfway down this, and we're gonna mark, make another horizontal mark here. And this is going to be where our nose will be. Okay? And then we're going to divide this last section into thirds. This will be where the lips part. A little high on that. Where the lips part. And the chin. All right, so from there we're going to make five evenly spaced, or we're gonna create five even spaces across the, the, um, the eye line here, okay? So we're going to have basically create five eye spaces. So what's nice about this particular size of head is I've got about five inches here. So I can really, starting here is five, we're gonna make a mark here at four, three, then two, then one, one, one. I'm gonna fix that, hold on. Let's make sure we got that center on point. All right, there we go. Four, three, two, one. All right, so that's one fifth here, one fifth here, one fifth here that's divided by that center line, one fifth here and one fifth here. These two fifths right here are gonna be where your eyes belong, okay? First, before I create my sockets though, I'm going to draw a line down right here where these two lines meet, where the, the bottom of the nose and the lines from the corners of the eyes where those meet, that is gonna be the edge of your nose. So we don't want those lines to go away, okay? And we're gonna keep these marked here too. I'm always going back and remarking things as I'm working if things start to get erased always going back and drawing those lines. That way I know that I'm sticking to my proportions. All right? Okay, so from there, I'm going to take my fingers, this is gonna get a little more red, and I'm going to push back and create eye sockets. All right? I'm smoothing the clay down, noticing that the socket rests further back on the sides of the head here. I'm gonna push that clay down, using some of that clay to push up and create a little bit of a brow bone. We wanna make sure we're not giving the head a, uh, almost a caveman look, okay? So don't make that brow bone too pronounced. I'm gonna add a little bit of clay to this, this spot that's bothering me. There we go. So one of the most the most common issues I see when students create or sculpt the figure is they make these this uh, socket rest way too far forward and then almost creates this like flatness of the face. You want to make sure that's falling back a little bit. So that brow bone kind of creates, and we, I talked a little bit about this whenever we were sculpting the eye, the brow bone kind of wraps up and then down and around, back towards the temple. See that? So that's gonna kind of create that socket for you. I'm gonna pinch just a little bit around, because that's where the bridge of your nose is gonna be here, is that where that line is right there. That's where this bridge is gonna be. All right. 
Next thing I'm gonna do is gonna start with the nose. You remember how we are kind of making this triangular slug shape to begin with, with noses? I'm just pushing that clay down. Remember, I'm not letting it surpass that little line I created there. So again, that's just the bridge of the nose that I've created. And then I'm gonna put two little balls of clay on the edges for nostrils. I'm gonna make sure this is keeping the camera too. All right. And those nostrils are just gonna rest just outside that line that you created for the corner of the eye. Okay. All right. I'm gonna blend that in just a little bit using my number one, my number one gal right here. Remember what I said about nostrils before? We wanna make sure that we're not letting them just kind of fall flat to the face. Kind of curve around that nostril or the wing, I guess, of the nose. The nostril would be the hole in the nose. I'm gonna smooth down that bridge. Remember I talked about like the, the center of the nose right here? It's a little bit wider then the point here, and then it gets a little bit more narrow before it gets to the tip of the nose. All right, before I get too far into dealing with the nose, I'm going to stop and move on because we wanna work in generalities throughout this whole thing. We don't wanna work in specifics. We don't wanna work on one eye for two hours and then another eye for two hours because what will happen is you're gonna end up with one eye up here and one eye down here and you're gonna end up with a sloth situation. So we wanna make sure that we are working on everything all at once, all right? I'm not getting too detailed into anything. It's really easy to get sucked into one thing. If you feel, if you notice yourself getting that way, take a step back, take a break, come back to it. Um, a few tips for um, sculpting in this, this manner. You tend to get really like up into it and really tight and you start to kind of see things that aren't really there or um, it's just not really working out. Um, make sure you're taking a step back every once in a while and getting a good look at it because when you're too close to it, sometimes you're not seeing things that are going wrong. Um, and also take a second and use your mirror and look at your sculpture in the mirror. Sometimes that can reveal some things that are going wrong in the sculpture as well. Um, or even a photograph and then looking at it um, and kind of finding the things that are going wrong with it. All right. Moving on, I'm gonna add my top lip, which is gonna be that like trapezoid mustache situation. So I'm gonna push that down and around and give her a real mean mug. You guys can dabble a little bit in adding expression to these pieces. Um, I'm kind of liking where this is going with this kind of upset, angry face. So I'm gonna keep going with it. But now I have to make this face in the mirror over and over again until and get it right, so this might have been a bad decision. All right, next chunk of clay. Remember, it's just like a little slug of cigar shape. Ooh, that's way too big to create that bottom lip. And I'm just gonna shove that underneath there. Blend that clay into the chin. Remember those fat pads down below that bottom lip? We're gonna accentuate that here in a second. Just gonna press that down around. All right, and then I'm gonna take a little ball of clay here and add the chin.
All right, it's looking pretty good so far. Gonna work on some of this face shape a little bit before I get too far in. You're gonna see that I kind of work with planes. So we've got the side of the face, which is kind of like this plane here on the cheek. And then we notice that there's like a bit of a, a triangular shape that exists right here underneath the eye that then falls down into the lip. Here, I'm gonna kind of make these shapes that I see in my mind's eye basically on this piece here. So there's a plane, there's a plane. Okay, here's a plane here, so I'm just going to smooth that down. See how that starts to kind of create simple shapes of the face? So now I'm going to start getting down to detail. So I'm going to grab a seat. So I've got my mirror right here in front of me. I can look at myself the entire time that I'm working on this. Scoot just a little over. Okay, so I'm going to start with adding my eyes. So I'm going to use this technique of um, using the little bit of clay, like a little ball of clay to add. And then I'm going to kind of carve the eye into the surface. So it's going to be a little bit of a combination. Like I said, sometimes I just do whatever I feel like doing at the time for my method of making eyes, but they're typically one of the two ways that I showed you guys in the last video. So I'm going to press that ball of clay in, making sure it's staying round. So I'm pushing in towards the corner of the eye and I'm pushing in towards the edge of the eye here, the outer corner, I guess you could say. Now making sure that the eyeball does not protrude beyond the bridge of the nose or the, um, the brow bone. If it does protrude beyond the brow bone or the bridge of the nose, then it's going to be likely that the eye will get poked out. So that doesn't work. So we're going to Push that back just a little bit. So it is protruding a little bit more than I'd like it to. Your brow bone and the bridge of your nose actually work to protect your eye and prevent it from getting poked. It's part of the reason why if you like run into something, you hit your, your eyebrow before you hit your eye. <laughs> There's a reason for that. All right, now I'm going to do the second one. So I always draw a line across here because I want to make sure that my eyes are going to be on the same playing field here. So excuse me if I'm blocking the camera for a minute. Can't, you got to see what I'm doing. All right. Another ball of clay here. I'm going to press that in. Now I want to make sure that it's lining up in the same place. The corner of the eye lines up with the corner of the nose. Again, I'm pushing the outer corner back 
Remember that eye is still staying round. <laughs> Trying to make that face in the mirror. Not cute. Okay, again, I'm going to go back, measure things, make sure I'm getting things right here, a little off there, make sure that clay over there. Oh, one thing I failed to mention to you guys, the center of your eye is always going to line up with the corners of your mouth. This is a little far over the side. All right, so let's draw that line here. That should have been drawn a while ago when I put the lips on. I get a little ahead of myself sometimes because I do this so much. All right. Okay, I'm not going to get too detailed with the eyes just yet because I want to add ears before I get any further. I'm going to also smooth this chin out. Remember how I talked about using your tool and kind of digging in and creating that lip? All right, I'm doing what I'm telling you not to do is which is get too deep into one thing and uh, not address others. <laughs> some other parts of the ear and just to kind of beef it up a little. Okay. on here in a second all right I think I talked a little bit about this whenever we were sculpting noses but you want to make sure that when you're sculpting that smile line that it begins up at the top of the wing of the nostril not down here that's not how it works that whole lip tissue is connected at the corner corners of the nostrils here
Okay, I'm gonna move on a little bit. Add some clay where I think it needs to be added in some spots. All right, scooping out some of those lips. Remember we talked about like the nodes that exist. So if I'm making a frowny face, those nodes kind of get a little bit downturned. And then the skin. Some wrinkling that happens there. See a little bit of that Cupid's bow. I'm going to take some clay out of the nostrils. Remembering that that's kind of like a kidney shape that we're cutting out. So I'm going to start here, making sure that I leave a nice um, septum there. I don't want to make it too thin. I'm going to cut then down and around. So it's a bit of like a kidney or teardrop, teardrop shape rather than a perfect circle. Just kind of cleaning up that edge so it's not so sharp. Same on the other side. So I'm always drawing like shapes on here and like, I'm like, okay, so I don't have this like really denoted the cupid's bow really like good and defined yet, but I'm going to draw that shape so I can kind of figure out where I need to be making um, cuts and adjustments. Then I can kind of define that cupid's bow just a little bit more once all that clay is pulled up. I'm starting to look sad or sassy. Just plain old ticked off. <laughs>
know, guys, I got a little quiet, but I'm trying to concentrate. Bring that down around. All right, here we go. That lip's looking a little bit more pouty. Hmm. There we go. <laughs> Just need a bit of a push. All right, give it a little bit more of a cheekbone and cheek here. A little bit more definition to the face. So I kind of um, start with kind of like a really kind of skeletal version and then kind of beef it up as I go adding a lot more skin and tissue and things like that to the figure. little work on this nose, a little, a little narrow. Okay. Let's move forward. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is put the ears on. All right, so here's a few tips and tricks for ears. So your ears are typically the same distance here as your eye is to here. I know that sounds bonkers, but it's true. So I'm going to measure from the corner of the eye down to the chin, okay? And then measure back. Oop, that's not right. Okay. Let's see, get that right here. And make sure I get that chin right. Okay. Here we go. All right. Kind of dug into the side of the ear there, or eye there. Okay, so from there, I'm gonna add the ears. I'm gonna draw a line from that ear line right here. And then it, the ear oftentimes meets 
or the ear meets the head at the same level as the corner of the eye. So that ear is also gonna rest on that eye line as well. And then we're gonna draw another line from the corner of the mouth back. So usually the bottom of the ear rests somewhere in between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of the ear, depending on how big the ear is. It changes from person to person. Let's see if we can get away with using a, a rubber rib as a template. I think we can. Might have to shrink it down just a little, but I think we can. One, gotta make two ears. All right, and I know I'll get the question, can I cover my um, ears with hair as a solution to not have to make ears? And I'm gonna tell you no. Um, so I want you to make ears. Um, if you do, and if that is part of the style, like if your ears are covered by hair, that's totally fine. I just want you to sculpt, make sure you sculpt the ears before you put the hair on. Trust me. It will look like you don't have ears if you don't do that first. I used to think I could get away with that back in the day, and I could not. Look at me, I'm fussing with these damn lips. Okay. Gonna make another ear. I'm getting distracted. All right, I've got both ears finished. They're relatively the same size and shape. I'm gonna pinch a little bit off the end because they look huge on her. My ears are pretty big though, since this is a self-portrait, it might be kind of accurate. Okay. All right, and I'm going to attach the head or the ears to the head behind that line that I drew downward. And the corner where the ear attaches to the head is gonna meet right at the corner of those two intersecting lines back here. And then the attachment, the bottom of the ear is gonna rest somewhere between the bottom of the nose and the bottom of, or in the um, part of the lips. You guys hear Bernie? Barking at nothing again. All right, so when your ears are attached to your head, remember that they don't just stick flat back to your head um, and they don't stick straight out. It's kind of, it's a subtle, like, um, they, they stick out a little bit further at the top than they do at the bottom. And it's pretty subtle. Okay, I'm gonna connect that other ear real quick. Look at me, I'm getting distracted by other things that I'm going to sing along. That's a start. Okay, so now I'm going to start focusing on getting these eyes done.
right after I um, finish beefing up my nose a little bit. My nose is not this narrow. Let's be real. What I really love about sculpting the figure is sometimes it can start to feel like so creepily real while you're sculpting on it. Stop fussing with that and move on to getting these eyes right, like I said I was going to. Alright, so I'm going to start with the left eye. Um, the reason I'm going to start with the left eye is because the right side is my dominant side. And if I start with my dominant side, that one's going to be great, this one's going to suck. If I start with one that's going to suck, it's not going to be that hard to match it, right? <laughs> that's just my, my thought process here. So I'm going to start with my non-dominant side first. Again, I'm going to draw that line across here to make sure that I'm getting my eyelids set in the right place. Okay, so if I were making this face, I'd be like wide-eyed and really like kind of, you know, laying it on thick. So I'm going to really open up those eyes. I'm going to cut or draw actually the shape of the eye first on both sides. Look, I started with my right side. I lied to y'all. The reason why I'm drawing this on first is I want to make sure I get this all right before I start or else I'm going to end up with eyes that look bizarrely different. Now, the beauty of it is that nobody's eyes are exactly the same, so it's totally fine to get it not quite right. Um, but unfortunately, when we're looking at sculpture, we have a tendency to pick out the flaws, or at least I do. So I'll notice like if something isn't quite right. but. Honestly, an eye, one eye that's a little bit larger than the other is actually pretty friggin' normal for human beings. I have one eye that is a little, like, hangs a little lower than the other. Not hangs a little lower, but it doesn't, um, kind of, doesn't open as wide as the other. I doubt it's even noticeable to anybody else, but I've noticed it. All right. All right. So I'm just kind of defining the shapes of those eyes to make sure I get them even. I feel like this eye is actually coming out a little bit further, so I'm going to push that back a little bit before I get too far into it and can't go back. Some of that clay back. Try that again then. Yep, we got it right there. Okay. So I'm kind of coming over here and measuring and just kind of lining things up and making sure I've got everything kind of matching properly.
So the shape I'm drawing is kind of like a trapezoid shape here on top, kind of curves up and over that eyeball. And then that lower lid again kind of just drapes down and around the bottom of the eyeball. So now that I've got that drawn, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start kind of carving that out or pushing the clay up and down to kind of create a recess in, the, in that eye. So looking at everyone's eye, or eye pieces, the one thing I noticed is they were a little on the flat side and weren't quite as round, um, didn't have that roundness of the eyeball on the inside. Maybe that's just something that's hard to translate in a photograph or a demonstration. But so you can kind of see, I'm like digging, poking in to the eye and then pulling clay back out. And really accentuating, accentuating the roundness of that eyeball. some more clay out from underneath that eyelid. You really want to make sure there's the definition between the eyelid and the eyeball. Pushing that clay back. I'm going to trim back a little bit of that upper lid because I really want the eyes to be wide open. Make a few adjustments here. There we go. All right, so I'm going to push some of that clay back. Kind of try to get some expression here. So if I want my eyes to look like sad puppy dog eyes, the brow muscles are actually going to turn upward. You know, see what I'm saying? Um, and I'm going to pull some of that clay out so that, to kind of create that the illusion of the brow moving up. Okay. I got a little mangled there, but it's okay. on that eye. A little too much clay here on the Nose is still looking a little small. There we go. That's better.
Okay, before I get in too deep, I'm going to start working on this other side too. All right, well, I got distracted by the lips because I'm going to avoid that eye like the plague. <laughs> All right. Before I do that, make sure I'm still recording. <laughs> Stopped recording on me a handful of times before, so I want to make sure that I'm not getting in a pickle again. All right. I'm going to sculpt that other eye. So again, I'm going to be pushing, cutting the clay off, out, and pushing the clay around to kind of create. Pushing the clay down and around. Getting there. Add a little bit more clay to that lower lid. Just make it kind of seamlessly flaw into the cheek. Okay, those are kind of some sad, sad looking eyes. 
going to wait for these to stiffen up a little bit more before I start doing any more work on it. It's kind of ooey gooey and things are moving around a little bit too much. So I'm going to let it set up a little bit and I'm going to add some hair. All right. So this is the one thing I haven't shown you guys yet is hair. You know how to do eyes, you know how to do a nose, you know how to do a mouth, you know how to make an ear, right? All of that's already put into place. So we're going to start with hair. So when you're thinking about hair, you want to think about hair as, oopsies. Let's fix that. There we go. So when you're sculpting hair, you want to think about mass rather than sculpting individual hairs. So when I think about myself, if I'm sad, it's probably going to end up having some really sad looking hair, right? So I'm going to take, draw the hairline on first. The hairline doesn't just simply go all the way around the head. It's drawn kind of like a U shape here at the top of the head. It comes to a point uh, like right above the temple and then draws down. And then there's like a little bit of sideburn there. Okay. So that's just the hairline. So I'm going to start attaching clay at the hairline. So I think about where my part's going to be and I start from there. And I kind of just work like with volume rather than individual strands of clay. You can use your fingers or any tools to kind of drag across. I like to kind of create the texture of hair with my fingertips. Sometimes I like to use a bit of a sand down, sanded down popsicle stick that I obviously can't. Oh, there it is. And I like to dip it in water and let the texture of the wood create what looks like, if you get real close to it, you can't really see it in the video, I'm sure, like a hair texture. When you dip in the water, it can get really nice flowing lines. 